So I recently got this camper to tow around with my Prius. <laughs> it tows like a dream, but I was getting a little bit of a squat. I figured with all the insane wheeling I do in my spare time, and now this extra tongue weight, it was time for some upgrades. Upgrades, people, upgrades. That's how we make the dough. After scouring the forms for all the known possibilities, my master plan was born. With some experience carrying extra weight, I knew the standard 1.5 inch lift kit by itself wasn't going to cut it. Even with the lift kit, when you carry a heavy load, it just squats back down to regular height. And that's helpful, but I needed a little bit more. And I needed it where it matters most, in the rear. Well then why is she called Aunt Fanny? Couldn't call her Aunt Booty. Whoa! So the choice was simple. Lift kit spacers all around, plus a spring upgrade in the rear. Old spring, new spring. For added weight capacity and a little more ground clearance. At first, I was gonna transplant some rear springs from a Toyota Matrix strut, but it involved some modifications to the strut perch that I wasn't comfortable doing. So then I turned to Facebook to consult with a few kind lifted Prius owners. They recommended me a shop called Valley Springworks. And as of right now, it seems they're the only manufacturer of Gen 2 heavy duty springs. I called them up, asked for some Prius springs, and they said, no problem, how would you like them? I asked for a spring that would add two inches of height and be stiff enough to carry a heavy load without sagging. They said, that'll run you $400. And after a few days of not wanting to spend that much money on springs, I placed an order. That hurts a little bit. Hopefully it's worth it. And for the lift kit spacers, I decided 350 for a set was too expensive when this option was available on eBay for like half the cost. All right, now on to the install. If you're looking for a step-by-step -step tutorial, follow the steps to remove the struts from any of the strut tutorials that already exist. There are some really good ones out there. And before you put them back in, follow these steps to install the spacers and springs. I started out by just installing the rear lift spacers. Once you get the struts out, all you really have to do is blast the old strut studs out and replace them with the new studs included in the lift kit. Set the spacers on top and reinstall the strut. I spent a few months and a few thousand miles on these and they were great for when I used my cargo carrier, but after towing I realized it wasn't enough. So next I installed the springs. Interesting. I was a little afraid of using the spring compressor, it was my first time using one, but it turned out just fine. Just fine. No problem. Safety glasses, that'll protect me, right? Well, we're off on the bottom. See that, that gap off there? So I think we're good to take this off. It definitely helped to have an impact wrench to get the top nut off the strut. That's cool. Shmoney. Remember this. Nut. Washer. Bushing. Get out of here. Like that. Right here. Okay, this goes underneath. Get out. Yeah, yeah. Once you take the nut and the hat off the strut, you can remove the spring. And now with the spring off, you can see the new springs are longer and thicker than the stock spring. Compress the new spring and slide it on. Put the strut, hat, and nut back on. And they go back onto the car the same way they came out.
What is that? <laughs> what is that? Now onto the front. Front lift. Once you take the front struts off, you can see it's harder to access the studs than it was on the rear struts. Again, you need to remove those stock strut studs and replace them with the new longer ones included in the kit. You could probably figure out a way to do it without taking the strut head off, but it's easier if you do. I used a marker at the beginning to make sure everything stays lined up. Let's go. Okay, just remember how these go back on. Top part. Okay, now it's time to get these bolts out. Saw this technique from somebody else. Shout out to you. So you put a bolt like this or this. Blast away at the hammer. Oh, that's easy. That is too easy. We're like a factory. Now I spoke too soon. Place them with the new studs included in the lift kit. I made the mistake of not pressing the studs into the strut hat before trying to reinstall them and I got stuck unable to tighten those bolts from the top. And they just started spinning so I was kind of screwed. They would just spin. It was infuriating but I was just a novice but that's how you learn you know. Damn. So make sure you press those studs in while you have the strut taken apart. I did some research and came across this technique. Line it up, put the socket over the end, and then find some sort of nut or whatever. I don't know, this like just seemed like it fit nice. And then put that on the other end and then get that corner into the vise. Sorry if you can't see, I'm trying to give you a view. But so you get this situated, you get it into place. Your stud is going through here. You got your nut, whatever your piece of metal is, pushing it down and you can start cranking it. I don't know, I'd be careful. Wear safety glasses in. Shield yourself in case something goes flying. You'll probably need a breaker bar or a cheater bar to crank it. Oh yeah. So yeah. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I think that works. So. I used some washers and nuts and a vise, and it worked like a charm. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Set the spacers on top, put the strut, hat, and nut back on. There we go. And back into the car they go. The driver's side strut and spacer went in easy, but the passenger side has less wiggle room, so you need to jack up or compress the strut a little bit to get it in place. Once you get one of those big steering knuckle bolts in on the bottom, you're golden. Once everything's back together and the car's on the ground, you can tighten up your top nut bolts one last time and be careful tightening those nuts. I don't know if it's because the spacers or what, but I broke one of those top bolts before it reached its torque spec and I had to take it all apart for the third time. And that was fun, but you live and you learn, you know? Now the car is back on the ground. Behold your new ride height. Still floating in the back, but that's good. Do you set up to like 10? That's pretty good. Unloaded. That's how we're looking. And with stock tires. We could get bigger tires, go higher too, but we'll wait on that. Then of course, get an alignment. Your tires will thank you. All in all, I'm pleased with the results. I wish the front was a little taller, but I know when I have it towing loaded down in the back, it'll be more level. What would I have done differently? Well, nothing yet. I'm going to see how these upgrades meet my needs, and if I want more, I'll save up for some taller springs in the front. Valley Springworks said they'll make those if you want them, and if it seems right, I'll throw on some bigger tires. For now though, I'm happy with the improvements, and I'm excited to drive this thing. 
it's pretty awesome to get this added functionality out of such a economical car with like pretty reasonable and affordable upgrades like these. But hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them for sure, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace!